Hey everybody, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you so much for being here. Tonight, I am watching the last two episodes of Band of Brothers. I am actually really sad. Like, I don't want it to end. I don't want to say goodbye to these guys. I'm also scared because these last two episodes are gonna be hard. Although, it seemed like before this, the war seemed to be coming to an end which I feel like will make it even sadder if some of these guys die like at the end of the war. Like they made it all that. Oh, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not even gonna, I don't know. I'm nervous and sad and hope that everyone's okay. This is called Why We Fight. I've heard from a couple people that this is the best episode, but maybe also the hardest, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Okay, remember, if you want to see the full-length reaction to this, you can head on over to Patreon. The link is in the show notes. All of my Band of Brothers episodes are there, as well as all the movies, full reactions. Okay, the last two, here we go. I guess the only good crowd is a dead one. Well, most of them were kids. We all were kids. We thought that the Germans were probably the evilest people in the world. A lot of those soldiers, I've thought about this often. That man and I might have been good friends. We might have, and we might have had a lot in common. We might have liked to fish, you know, he might have liked to hunt. Of course, they were doing what they were supposed to do, and I was trying to do what I was supposed to do. Under different circumstances, we might have been good friends. I'm trying to guess who's who by the way they look now versus who they cast as them. You know, that is interesting what they said. It's true, right? They thought of these German soldiers as evil, but really they were just scared young guys. I mean, I know now that the SS like were like really terrible and unmerciful and had really harsh views and treatments, obviously, but some of these guys, I know at the end they said they were recruiting young men and old men and they were just putting in a last ditch effort. That's why war is so blah. Because it's just humans killing other humans. I need to clarify, Hitler was evil, his followers were evil, but maybe some of these guys that they're running into or just doing what they're supposed to do for their country, just like they were, just like those men said. <sighs> oh, Buck, Lipton, Winters. My heart is seriously beating fast. Part nine, why we fight. Tell you one thing about the Krauts. They sure clean up good. Yeah. Well, he needs a little more, son. Beethoven. Sorry, sir. That's not Mozart. That's Beethoven. Nix. I love Nix still. Okay. One month earlier. I don't know this guy. Where's my stuff? I'm also kind of in love with Spears, especially after last episode. How'd it go this morning, the jump? Took a direct hit over the drop zone. I got out, two others got out. The rest of the boys? Oh, they blew up over Germany somewhere. Boom. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh well, it wasn't me. Uh-oh. You know, the real tragedy is they also lost their CEO, so... Guess who gets to write all the letters home? I'll be happy to hear that Sink is transferring you back down to Battalion S3. What do you think I should write to these parents, Dick? Hear what I said, Nix? You've been demoted. Yeah, demoted, gotcha. Because I don't know how to tell them their kids never even made it out of the goddamn plane. Nix. You tell them what you always tell them. Our sons died as heroes. You really still believe that? 
sure that you all be happy to know Oklahoma's still playing on Broadway. Hey, Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain, and a wave in wheat can sure smell sweet when the wind comes right behind the rain. <laughs> Rita Hayworth's getting married. Uh, oh, Rita, say this in true. See, I feel like they're kind of getting excited, like it might be over soon. Yeah, Rocco just finished it. Oh, yeah? Any sex in it? <laughs> Ain't that kind of book. A tree grows in Brooklyn. <laughs> He's humming. Shut up. They're all piss and vinegar. Where the crowd's at. Let me at them. When do I get to jump into Berlin? Do you understand that this is the best part of fucking what I've seen? I got hot chow, hot showers, warm bed. Germany is almost as good as being home. I even got to wipe my ass with real toilet paper today. And stop with the fucking love songs. He's being very mean, but I get it. It must be really hard to have your friends die and then these new guys come in and I want to see war when they've been through hell and back. I'm having some trouble finding some whiskey. I had 69. Exactly right. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, sir. That ain't gonna be easy to find here in Germany. Pickens are kind of slim here. Yeah, don't I know. <laughs> hey, Jesse, you have news? I'm oh, sorry, sir. I, I didn't realize hey. you were here. What news? 300,000 Krauss just surrendered. That's Tom Hardy. Was that Tom Hardy who was before? Jesus Christ, the dog? The cat's is divorcing me. I'm sorry. She's taking everything. She's taking the house, I'm taking the kid, she's taking the dog. It's not even her dog. It's my dog. She's taking my dog. She's divorcing him? Hasn't she not even seen him? They sound pretty good. Good times, Webb. When we get home, I mean, first thing I'm gonna do is get my job back at the cab company in Frisco. Then I'm gonna find me a nice Jewish girl, great big soft titties, with a smile to die for. So what did you say? Literature. Get out of here, you serious? I love to read. Do you? Yeah. We're now entering enemy territory. Whoa, that is a lot of soldiers. Hey, you! That's right! You stupid trap bastards! That's right! Stupid fascist pigs! Look at you! You have horses! What were you thinking? That's enough, Webster. That doesn't, that seems out of character for Webster. Interrupting our lives for what? You ignorant, servile scum! What the fuck are we doing here? They're all becoming disillusioned about why they fight. Kind of reminds you of Bastogne. <gasps> yeah, now that you mention it. Except, of course, there's no snow. We got warm grub in our bellies. And the trees aren't fucking exploding from crowd artillery. But, yeah, Frank, other than that, it's a lot like Bastogne. Right? Bull, smack him for me, please. Thank you. Is he looking for his whiskey? Sure is quiet. Uh oh. Please, nothing bad happen. My heart is pounding. What's going on? Can you join us? Sir, uh, we found something. I'll be on a patrol. Frank, Frank, what is it? I don't know, sir. I don't know. What is it? Oh my gosh. Is this a concentration camp? Oh my gosh. Why are they all holding their breath? Open 
coming up. So. Back. Back. All right, boys, these people need care. Give them water and any spare rations you might have. Grab me some blankets, quick. Dick? <sighs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Pomozi. Molly, mas pomozi. Yoshi is here. Water. Was that person alive? <laughs> Will you ask him, uh, ask him what kind of campuses are they here? Fascistas here. They don't know? They didn't know at this point they were doing this, the Jewish people? You wouldn't. I'm, they didn't know about concentration camps yet? Women's camp is at the next row. No. <laughs> Did the Germans that were fighting, like, at the beginning through all this know about these concentration camps? Honestly, I just want to close this. <coughs> no. Oh my gosh. Find spears and figure out how the hell to give him some food. I'm not a human being. Are you one of those? Or are you gonna tell me that you never smelled the fucking stench? That's not what he says. He doesn't know what the hell you're talking about. We need to stop giving these men food right now. They're starving. If we give them too much to eat too quickly, they'll eat themselves to death. We need to keep them in the camp till we can find a place warm in town. You want us to lock these people back up? We need to keep them centralized so we can supervise their food intake and medical treatment. No! Did you see how they were sleeping in there? Grant Christensen, these prisoners have to be put back in the camp immediately. Let the men know. This is no for a kutsche sight! Camps like this all over the place. Seems the Russians liberated one a lot worse. Worse? Ten times as big. Execution chambers, ovens. The locals claim that uh, they never even knew the camp existed. They say we're exaggerating. I guess I thought that this whole time that they knew this was all happening and that's why they were fighting the war. I didn't know that the whole knowledge of concentration camps didn't come out until near the end. <laughs> they didn't know, <laughs> it seems like. Oh my, how did they make this? <laughs> like, That's the woman from earlier in the house. Did she know? Oh my, I can't. I can't. Hitler's dead. Holy shit. Shot himself in Berlin. Should have killed himself three years ago. Saved us a lot of trouble. Yeah, he should have. Forces were numerous. Forced concentration and death camp. These camps were part of the Nazi attempt to effect the final solution to the Jewish question. Five million ethnic minorities and six million Jews were murdered. Many of them in the camps. <sighs> oh. 
Okay, trying to pull myself together here. I thought when people said this episode was gonna be hard, it was because lots of our, the men that were in easy company were gonna die. I didn't realize that um, we were gonna see that. Obviously, I've learned about concentration camps and how horrific they were. When you see it like that, it's just hard to believe that that was part of our world at one point. Like, I don't understand how possibly that happened. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Ah, I saw the movie Life is Beautiful a long time ago and that had a deep impact on me because of this. To think that there were women and children in these camps too. And like I said, I didn't realize that the men and the locals and America didn't realize that that this was happening until this point. I thought that that's the whole reason they're fighting to stop Hitler from doing that. There's one more episode. Hitler's dead now. I don't understand why the war is not over. I'm interested to see how they made that look like that like it looked so real and all those men okay i'm just gonna watch episode 10. um sorry okay here we go i should have taken more of a breather in between it's gonna be annoying to hear me sniffing i just have the strongest desire to just give them all hugs. Not in like a corny way, I just... <sighs> Doc, where's he been? Sorry. <laughs> it was more than three years since Lewis Nixon and I decided to join the paratroops. And more than a year since we'd first gone to war. Three years. One year in war. I thought it might be you. Yeah, I heard reports about a red-headed Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you'll do after this? I get some breakfast. <laughs> There's a company in uh, Nixon, New Jersey. It's called Nixon Nitration Works. Oh, sounds picturesque. Yeah, well, oddly enough, I know the owners. <laughs> Are you offering me a job? We'll see how you do in your interview, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, only any of your qualifications, I think, probably scrape something up. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, just think about it. Wow. Seems empty. Very. I mean, any natives. That's because this is the one town you can't deny being a true Nazi. No, no. So Easy Company really went into Hitler's house like this? Wow. You know, whoever comes in here after is gonna take whatever isn't nailed down. Well, wouldn't want that to happen. <laughs> Are they not worried about those servants going to get a gun and... The Eagle's Nest was a surprise birthday present for Hitler, built with Nazi party money. It was one of the crown jewels of his empire, and the man was afraid of heights. I've never heard of this. Hey, Adolf! I love your Eagle's Nest. I hope you don't mind. We, we made ourselves at home. German army surrendered. The war is over? I got a present for you. Come on. <laughs> I 
What is it? 10,000 bottles of the world's finest liquor, wine, and champagne. <gasps> 10,000 bottles? Waiting for Austria in the morning, but don't feel you have to leave anything here for whoever comes next. Austria, sir. Happy VE Day. VE Day? <laughs> Victory in Europe. I like how he's so just stunned by this alcohol. No one wanted to leave Birch's garden until they saw Austria. Austria is on my bucket list. Wow. The war is over! Please accept this as my formal surrender, Major. It is better than to lay it on the desk of a clerk. You may keep your sidearm, Colonel. Wow, that must be weird for them. Heroic dead of a combined army and marine force mark the grim battlefield of Okinawa. That's what the Pacific is about, right? So, when are we going? We don't have a date yet. Are we gonna tell the men right away? Some of them will have enough points to go home. I think most of us here will have enough. I thought they were gonna get to go home. General Taylor is aware that many veterans, including Normandy veterans, still do not have the 85 points required to be discharged. He has authorized a lottery to send one man home in each company, effective immediately. Oh my gosh. For each company, the winner is Sergeant Darrell C. Powers. Yes. General Taylor has also announced that the 101st Airborne Division will definitely be redeployed to the Pacific. Wait here. What happened? You okay, Matt? You need some help? They wouldn't give me any gas. <laughs> Crouts. I tried to explain. Oh, no. This fucking limey wouldn't listen. Teach Hold on a second now, right? <laughs> You're going to shoot me, shoot me. If you're not, put the gun away. What happened to him? He shot in the head. They found a brain surgeon? <laughs> Miss him? <laughs> That's him. Oh my gosh. Please take care of this piece of shit. Grant's dead? No. Crowd surgeon says he's gonna make it. So it's an airborne exhibition. They have one of every Allied combat plane they've used in the war. Uh huh. I mean, yes, sir. If you need, if you need me to go, someone has to be there. Yeah, we do. We absolutely do. Winters is helping them leave. Oh, malarkey. You're giving me the choice as to where to reassign you, and I thought battalion headquarters might be a good place. I can think of a few better. Good. Lipton. Sobel. Captain Sobel. Major Winters. Captain Sobel. We salute the rank, not the man. Man, it's been a long war. It's been a tough war. We fought bravely, proudly for your country. You are a special group. We found in one another a bond that exists only in combat. Unter Kameraden. Among brothers. Die Fuchshöhlen geteilt haben. We've shared foxholes, held each other in dire moments. We've seen death and suffered together. I'm proud to have served with each and every one of you. You deserve long and happy lives in peace. Take a look at these two kids. What the hell happened to them? What does he mean? <gasps> wow. 
Wow. But Compton came back to see the company to let us know that he was all right. David Webster became a writer for the Saturday Evening Post and Wall Street Journal. In 1961, he went out on the ocean alone and was never seen again. What? George Luz became a handyman in Providence, Rhode Island. Luz. 1,600 people attended his funeral in 1998. Doc Rowe died in Louisiana in 1998. He'd been a construction contractor. Joe Liebgott returned to San Francisco and drove his cab. <laughs> Bull Ranneman was one of the best soldiers I ever had. He went into the earth moving business in Arkansas. He's still there. Carwood Lipton became a glass making executive in charge of factories all over the world. Ronald Spears stayed in the army. He retired a lieutenant colonel. He's yeah. in company! School circle! What about malarkey? For easy company, it was D Day plus 434. This morning, President Truman received the unconditional surrender from the Japanese. War's over. It, now it's over. Louis Nixon had some tough times after the war. He was divorced a couple of times. Then in 1956, he married a woman named Grace and everything came together for him. I stayed around Hershey, Pennsylvania, finally finding a little farm, a little peaceful corner of the world where I still live today. A very unusual feeling. It's a very unusual happening. And it's a very unusual Winters. bonding. And so we were a, a close-knit group. <laughs> Just brave, so brave is unbelievable. And uh, I don't know anybody that I admire more than, than uh, Bill Garnier and, and Joe Toy. I'm just one part of the big war, that's all. That's one Garnier. Part. And I'm proud to be a part of it. <laughs> I knew it. Sometimes it makes me cry. Oh. The real men, the real heroes, are the fellows that are still buried Thanks. over there. And after the war was over, and you came back out, Shifty. Well, you lost a lot of that. Oh my goodness. And he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no, but I served in a company of heroes. They were. <sighs> I can't believe it's over. I like the way it ended. Oh, easy company. They really were heroes. I don't say this lightly, but I really think that series like changed my life. I don't know if I've ever been as affected. I think I've said before, like I want to talk to everyone about it. I want to see if they've seen it. I knew about the war, but I feel like I was so ignorant about it. I was so humbled just to see what they really went through. I feel like I love all those men. The way they developed the characters and made you feel what they were feeling. I just love Easy Company. So many parts were so hard to watch, but honestly, I just feel like it's so important. I feel like everyone needs to see this. I want to say thank you to any person who has served past, present, future. Sincerely, thank you for your service. I really mean that. I just have such a deep respect that you leave your families and your safe home and fight for our freedom. I really do thank you for that. I love how they said at the end that that kind of relationship that all those men had can only be welded in combat together. Like that's not a relationship that can can be recreated and just like that German officer said they held each other they shared foxholes they watched their friends die together that bond I think would be unbreakable for them so I absolutely loved it now that I can look up spoilers I want to go research all of them I want to see what they look like I want to see more about their life after the war before the war Oh, like I said, I just want to give them all a hug. I know they're all gone now, but I'm so glad they made this. I feel like it was a privilege to watch. I know that sounds corny, but I really do. I'm gonna watch The Pacific now. I'm in it, guys. Who knew? I love the war stuff. 
If you like this content, you can see all my full reactions on my Patreon. Thanks again for being here and thank you for taking the time to comment and subscribe and like and just give me the support. It really does mean the world. So thank you so much. Okay, bye.